Hey everyone, my name is Adam. I'm a principal engineer at Elastic. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build an integration between Elasticsearch, OpenAI, and the third party API using function calling. Please follow along, but know that as always, you can find more details about this feature under the Elastic Search Labs page and also try it out yourself in a notebook. See the links under the video. Okay, so what is function calling? Function calling is a powerful feature offered by some large language models such as OpenAI GPT-4.0. It enables AI assistants to fetch data from outside the model and to take actions via custom functions. We know that GPT has been trained with pretty much the entire public internet and is able to interpret human language. However, this data doesn't change often. What if we wanted to make our application more dynamic and to provide answers based on real-time data, such as stock information or flight details? We can use function calling for this. Essentially, this means we have an application that integrates with OpenAI GPT and tells it, hey, some info comes from our application. We got this. And here is what our functions look like to fetch that data. So if you see any question or request that involves such and such data, just tell us how to call these functions based on the user's input. So when a user interacts uh, with our application, say by chatting with it, GPT will know when to provide the answer by itself and when to turn to a function that we declared to get the answer from there. It is important to note that OpenAI never executes the function directly. It just tells our application to do so and expects the result back. Let me demonstrate the end result of the actual example app that we will be building in the notebook of this blog post. The app is an assistant chatbot you can talk to and ask for flight and weather data such as this. Provide details of the last 10 delayed flights to Bangalore in tabular format and describe the current weather there. I'm just gonna copy paste this. And as you can see, the answer came back uh, nicely formatted and behind the scenes, this uses uh, function calling. All right. Ready to build this chat assistant app together? As I mentioned, we will also build two functions within the app. One will use Elasticsearch to query flight information. The other uses the open source Open Meteo API to fetch current weather data. I'll just reset the notebook to start with a clean slate. And we can go. Let's start by going through the requirements. For Elasticsearch, I'm gonna need an Elastic Cloud deployment. So I'll go to Elastic Cloud. I click Create Deployment. I give it the name, let's say, Function Calling. Uh, I leave everything else as the default and I click Create Deployment. And this will take about five minutes. So now is a good time to go and grab a coffee. Great, my cloud deployment is ready. So I'll open it. And I'm going to need an API key that will be used by our app. Uh, the best place to do this is uh, to click I'd like to explore on my own, and then go to search, because there is this fly out called uh, endpoints and API keys. And under the API key tab, I can create one, let's say, function calling. I'll create it. And here is the key. I'm also going to need an OpenAI API key. So I go to OpenAI, uh, navigate to API keys, and then create a new secret key. Uh, again, I call this function calling, and I'll just leave everything uh, as default and create a key. And finally, I'll populate Elasticsearch with some sample data of flight history. So for this, I'll go back to Elasticsearch. Uh, I'll go, I'll open a new tab. And here you can see dry sample data, other sample data sets. 
And with the click of a button, I can add sample flight data. Now that the data is added, let's just take a quick look at it. So I'm going to head over to uh, Kibana DevTools and do a quick search on this newly created index. And I can see that uh, each document contains rich information about flights. So there is a flight number. There is, are attributes about the uh, origin, uh, location, and the destination. Uh, and there are other pieces of information, such as uh, flight delays, uh, distance and uh, flight time. So this is pretty well structured data. We're all set. So I'll begin to go through the steps of the notebook. So first I'll install dependencies and import packages and set the credentials. First, the OpenAI API key, which comes from here. Uh, the Elastic API key comes from here. And then the Elastic endpoint, Elastic Search endpoint is also available here. There we go. And for OpenMeteo, we only need the endpoint URL because it's a public API, so it doesn't need an API key. Next, we'll construct the first function to fetch flight information from Elasticsearch. In this function, we will use GPT to transform a natural language query into an Elasticsearch query, and then we will execute it. So an input like top five flights to Bangalore will be converted into an Elasticsearch query JSON body against the flights index, containing clauses like size equals five and destination city equals Bangalore. But how does GPT know how to make this conversion and what field names to use from the index? We will use a technique called few-shot prompting, meaning we provide some samples in our prompt to show GPT the way to construct an elastic search query. We show our index mapping, what a sample document contains, and what some actual user uh, questions look like transformed to an ES query JSON. So here is a user query, and here's the corresponding Elasticsearch query JSON, and we provide three samples. And the prompt also contains the user input that was passed to the chat assistant. We'll introduce some helper functions for this. Get index mapping, get ref document, and generate ES query. Then we declare a function that actually calls Elasticsearch after generating this query and returns the response. This is function number one, fetch from Elasticsearch, and it takes the user's natural language query as a single argument. Function number two is much simpler. Given a latitude and longitude pair, we call the OpenMeteo API and return the response JSON as it is. So at this point, we have two functions that live in our application, in our notebook, but OpenAI is not aware of them yet. Now it's time to connect these blocks. We'll make a conversation with OpenAI's chat completion API. Uh, you might have seen this before. What goes in is a series of messages uh, back and forth, typically between the AI assistant and the user, and some special control messages. Uh, in this case, we instruct the assistant how to respond if it didn't find the answer and pass in the user query. But more importantly, we pass in our function definitions in a tools property. This property has a certain syntax. Uh, we are mainly declaring the function name, when to use it and how to use it, as in uh, what parameters it takes and what shape the parameters are. Uh, so this way we tell OpenAI, is it flight related information? Then construct a function call uh, with fetch from Elasticsearch and pass in uh, a query. Is it weather information? Then use the weather report function and pass in latitude and longitude. 
Once again, OpenAI will not execute these functions. It will just reference them in the chat response along with the generated input arguments. So our application, our notebook, can call them right away. So if I ask a question from my chatbot that is weather related, let's say, what's the current weather in, oops, in Montreal? And then it will use the weather API to get this information. And if it's flight related, let's say details of top five most delayed flights going to Montreal in tabular format, and then it will reach out to Elasticsearch to fetch the information and format it for me. There we go. To better understand how all of this works under the hood, I have modified this notebook and added some debug lines like this. So we will be able to see how the conversation goes step by step. Again, let's ask a flight delay related question. And let's uh, analyze the steps that take place. Our first input to GPT was the system message and the user query in the natural language. Along with the same request, we passed in our function declarations. So telling GPT that, hey, these are our functions and uh, for flight related information, this is the function to call. Uh, GPT recognized that our user query was about flight information. So it, in its response, it suggests that uh, we call the fetch from Elasticsearch function uh, with the user query as an input. This function is being called by our system and now we are prompt building mode. Uh, remember that we need to build a, a large prompt for GPT to provide enough context to generate an actual Elasticsearch query. So in that prompt, we provide the index mapping, a sample Elasticsearch document, what an actual document looks like in this index, and uh, a few examples of what a generated query looks like, along with the user's original input. GPT transforms this user query into an Elasticsearch query. This is the same in uh, JSON format. And you can see it uh, contains clauses about uh, the destination, uh, flight delay, and, uh, and some ordering based on flight delay. This gets executed still in the fetch from Elasticsearch function. It gets, this uh, query gets executed. And we see we get back some documents. Now, we attach this document to the message chain. So again, we call uh, GPT uh, along with this data that came from Elasticsearch. And that is enough for GPT to uh, respond and transform this data uh, into a human readable format, which is tabular. So to recap, in function calling, we provide a hint to an LLM such as GPT that on requesting certain pieces of information, our system has the function to provide that data. We declare the shape of these functions and in the conversation chain, the LLM asks us to execute a function with some input. So it's a powerful feature to build a hybrid integration between a domain system and an LLM. I hope this video has been helpful. See you next time. Bye.